Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, and this is an awesome chat part of AwesomeCast.net, our interview series. We talked about, we talked to awesome people, not just in Pittsburgh, they're all over the place, and today they're in Ohio. Check out everything at AwesomeCast.net, past interviews, uh, check us out on social media everywhere, uh, and please support the show. We have a Patreon going at Patreon.com, and we have some great, great supporters just like Thistle C Business Development that uh, we'll be talking about on this week's AwesomeCast. Uh, I believe that's 267 off the top of my head. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, how that's going. So with me, I have uh, uh, their their first time on this show, not new to the Awesome Cast Network. We had them on last year uh, before Ohio Linux Fest, which is the subject of today. It's coming up here uh, in uh, October, uh, the weekend of the 2nd, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the 2nd through the 3rd out there in Columbus. Uh, we have with us, first of all, Susan Rose on your right, if you're on the video, and Van Skochender. Kochender for close enough. Ah, was close. It. Oh, it was so close. I was so close. Thank you for joining me again. Oh, it was great to be here. And and, and you got the, the VIP that you get your own show this time. <laughs> 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 so uh so i mean it gets weird uh, talking about uh iphones next to next to linux so much right uh but not but it, it makes sense right as we talked about before it's kind of everywhere you're right yeah a lot of stuff is all tied together mm -hmm. so for the uninitiated tell me what is ohio linux fest so ohio linux fest well it started back in what was it 2002 i believe was the first year mm -hmm. the it was originally a group of Linux user groups or several Linux user groups in Ohio said, well, hey, why don't we get together and have a conference? So they all sort of converged on Columbus uh, at the Ohio State campus, and they, they pulled that off. And then the following year, they had some sort of a conflict over at, uh, over at the campus. They, they weren't able to use the buildings. So it, it kind of grew into a, an actual full-fledged conference. They got, you know, hotel conference rooms. And then uh, since then, we've been moved over to the uh, Greater Columbus Convention Center, and, and it's been there ever since. It's amazing. Awesome. And, and that's cool because I, I know here in Pittsburgh, you know, I'm very used to the we our loose nature we have with our uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh, but this is a full-on conference, right? Like how many, how many people are typically a part of this? Uh, we get our, our attendance last year, I think was somewhere in the high 800s. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's generally fluctuated somewhere around there. 800 to a thousand people is, is kind of what we plan for. Excellent. Excellent. So, so tell me, um, for those that don't know, again, for some of the uninitiated, you know, we talked about Linux a lot last year when we had mm -hmm. you on the show and kind of the state of it. And, uh, and, and, and especially these days, it seems, um, at least if you're paying attention to the tech side of things, uh, Linux seems to be a part of a little bit more everything. Of course, our Android phones, our Android TVs, Fire TVs are all oh, yeah. kind of based around this stuff. Uh, what are some surprising things that, it, that is run on this, uh, on, the, on this software, on this operating system that maybe some people don't know out there? Well, you, you mentioned TVs. That's one thing. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot of times you'll get, uh, I, a couple of years ago, I bought a TV uh, for my mom and, you know, it comes in the manual. There's a little page in there that says, you know, this contains Linux software in there and here's where you can go to actually download the software for the TV. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't uh, taken the step to reflash that. <laughs> so, the, oh, so so it actually like it reveals because I, I thought maybe like the the Linux consumer side would be a little bit hidden, right? Uh, it often can be. Mm -hmm. uh, they they should, you know, according to the the license that that the Linux kernel is under, they should give you at least notice to, that says, you know, this software is contained within here, and here's where you can go to get it. Uh, mm -hmm. If they just distribute the the binary version on on the device with you, now different hardware manufacturers, you know, the embedded space, they tend to be focused on, okay, well, let's cram the software in there and make sure it works and get it done. And so they don't always observe those niceties on the, on the, uh, the licensing side, but yeah, you can find it in all kinds of embedded devices. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my daughter at one point worked for a company that had a library. Their company was allowing people to 
look in their library of, of uh, Linux uh, programs that were already created for the Internet of Things type uses. So for example, washing machines and coffee pots and all different kinds of things. And they, um, therefore, uh, by paying a subscription, they could um, not have to start, start from square one when they were making the program for a similar object. They could, they could see how far along somebody else did with a particular Internet of Things type thing, and then mm -hmm. they could um, go from there to uh, build on that. So, uh, so you don't know <laughs> where what you're touching that that could contain Linux in it. Certainly, it seems like it's kind of uh, exploded here over uh, the last several years. Like you mentioned the Internet of Things. Of course, we're talking about like like the the fridges and and, the, mm -hmm. and our cars and everything. I think there's a base of Linux in my. I don't know. I have Microsoft Sync, and I think they they used a little bit of that in there too. I, but it was just like, micro, there was an article going around this week that Microsoft is actually using Linux for their Apache servers in some aspect. Um, so it's, it's really interesting to see them all uh, kind of getting uh, getting attached to that. So what are the benefits? Now, obviously, um, why has Linux kind of exploded into Internet of Things, all these uh, devices, uh, not just computers and tablets? Uh, I mean, there are a few different things. As, as Susan pointed out, you don't have to start from square one. You have a base and a lot of times it just requires if you if you have a new piece of hardware or something it just requires making some alterations to it in order to to get a, an operating system running on the new board so essentially it just it removes the amount of work that you have to do yourself mm -hmm. uh, the the free licensing is also a, a benefit because I mean you could also try to do that with uh, some of the proprietary uh, embedded systems, but you know, then you end up having to pay uh, a per unit cost for each one that you ship. And on on the other hand, if you're using Linux, you you do have to you know provide the code and you have to uh, you know do the maintenance on it. But those are more or less a fixed cost. Instead of it doesn't go up each for each one that you sell you're not paying that incremental cost. It's mm -hmm. really just a one-time cost that and you can spread out among all, all the units that you sell. Awesome. So uh, going back to your Ohio Linux Fest that's coming mm -hmm. up here October 2nd and 3rd here in Columbus. Uh, so I'm looking at, at this and, and first, you know, not really digging into the site too much, but maybe a first impression mm -hmm. is, well, I'm not a developer. Why, why, why is this for developers? Is this for... Uh, more enth computer enthusiasts. At what levels are are are, are people coming here? Obviously, a lot of people are. Uh, uh, you know, eight hundred last year. And uh, so, so what what kind of people are you attracting? Who who would benefit from 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 this uh, event? Um, we're pitching it at a, a pretty as, as broad of an audience as we can get. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly developers for sure. Uh, we've got talks organized into sort of tracks where we could fit them together. We've got several that are oriented towards or towards the uh, community. Uh, we've got several that are oriented towards uh, security. People working on virtualization, that's sort of a big a big deal nowadays. Uh, and the contain a whole container space is one where people are, you know, you, you get all, all sorts of different options going on there. Um, so I would say it it tends to skew towards people who are uh, often professionally involved, so either the developers or system administrators. But, I mean, we do have a, a fair number of people who just, you know, like myself, I, I have no IT uh, professional experience. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really just sort of a personal interest for me. So, you know, if it's something that you're, that you're, you have a, a a personal interest in just as a user, uh, I think it would be helpful for, for those people as well. So, um, yeah, and you have to remember too that this is a Linux slash free open source software convention as of well. Course. So, um, it, for people, cringe, who are still using Windows, there are <laughs> quite a number of free and open source software um, programs. I just made a, a, a brief list. Um, like Firefox, Thunderbird, uh, GIMP, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, 
And I've also used uh, Drupal and Chatzilla uh, for the IRC client. So, so uh, that whole freedom, the whole freedom thing of being able to use something that's free, that's downloadable, that's um, that works well, you know, on your computer, is is um, is liberating. Um, and people always move to the direction of more freedom. And uh, the whole um, idea of free and open source software and operating systems gives you more choice, uh, more freedom, more creativity, possibly less cost. Mm -hmm. But um, finding the, uh, the culture of that environment with all the people that believe in those um, type of ideals and then like, wait, cool. And they're helping one another or they have uh, not at Ohio Linux Fest per se, but the, uh, the lugs certainly have install fests and and help each other out with different um, hardware issues and reinstall issues and and uh, and you know sharing tips on a on a new open source program maybe you you don't really know what the best use of Blender is or or what um, how to do something on GIMP that they they'll show each other things and and that uh, collaboration is uh, such a, a teamwork. And um, that's probably the greatest love of, of a lot of people. They, they they come there for the technology, but then they get hooked into the um, to the whole culture of of the free and open source uh, movement. And oh, by the way, it's not just for software and Linux. It's also free hardware. Um, we're talking about uh, protecting rights for people so that they can change the operating system in their tablet or their, you know, their uh, devices, and so that they aren't locked down or locked out of um, of using the hardware that they purchased in the way that they would like to um, do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, Microsoft uh, making some interesting strides, and, and it seems to be locking in computers that will only have Windows on them mm -hmm. uh, in interesting ways. I noticed uh, upgrading some, of, you know, trying out Windows 10, uh, it, it, it registers it to the to the board <laughs> entirely. It makes me wonder if I can even put Ubuntu on this thing. And uh, I know I know there's been some talk one way or another with some chip configurations. So so what? Um, it, well, in, in that I think so. When, you know, when we look at some people are, are saying, well, I, I got my upgrade for free for Windows 10, but that's not really free in the long run, is it? Well, I mean, you you get, and I I have to say I'm not very familiar with the uh, the Windows pricing, how that's supposed mm -hmm. to be working now. Um, I, I don't think anybody who generally uses Windows <laughs> knows either. Like, I got a free, like, I'm still waiting for the other foot to drop. <laughs> like, and then when do I upgrade? Uh, you know, what, what, what are you doing next? Is this going to be a subscription thing? Yeah, people I think are coming asking. up with different models. I mean, I guess, you know, the, you know, the Apple model is they, you know, they charge you when you buy the hardware, they charge you for it and it, it comes. It comes with that. I haven't quite figured out what the uh, what the new Microsoft model is going to be. But uh, as Susan was pointing out, I mean, it's it's free. It, it's uh, sort of a dual thing. It's it's not so much the free as in price, although that is part of it. But it's also the fact that it's free as in freedom. So the the software code is available and, and you know is open for anyone to to make an improvement if you find a bug or something like that. I'm not a programmer, so I can't mm -hmm. fix it, but I could at least, you know, bring it to somebody else and say, hey, I've got this this program. It does mm -hmm. everything that I need, but there's one thing missing. And so I can take it to, to them and say, okay, can you add in this feature? And the, the, typically the the way most of these projects are, are set up is it's a, a community development so that you know, you, you could have a company that just releases stuff and just kind of lets it go and, and and never never interacts with anybody. But the, the common model is to say, okay, well, we're going to have this public repository. We're going to have uh, a public place where we'll take bug reports and we'll respond to them and we'll, you know, listen to what your suggestions are for features and maybe we'll implement some of them, but, you know, maybe some of them aren't so popular but there, you always have the option, you always have the freedom because it's free software that you can go and if if the actual main developers won't do something for you, you can always go elsewhere. One thing I've noticed, um, 
because I, you know, I don't know if we talked about this last year, but I always had the friend that was running, you know, we're talking 1999, 2000, and he had like Debian Linux and everything, mm-hmm. and he's uh, going in command line and writing bash files and everything. And I, that really colored, and I think a lot of people at that time uh, helped computers i guess five years earlier i was doing dos commands in the same fashion and probably impressing the hell out of my grandma right uh but uh you know that really colored my perception of linux oh i'd love to use it but i don't want to have to go in to make it work with my computer was always my perception and i i build computers i mean I, I'm, I'm not unfamiliar with the, with the hardware with the software etc and I've noticed over the years, you know, Ubuntu is one that I've messed with a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mint, uh, uh, Puppy Linux is, is another fun one. Uh, and uh, I, uh, the softening of Linux, can I call it? You know, mm-hmm. I, it, when I put an Ubuntu on a, a laptop, I actually still have a 2005-ish Dell XPS that runs like a dream when I throw Ubuntu on it. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's usable. It's comparable visually with current operating systems. Um, has, is, is that kind of, we've worked out all the bugs and you don't have to worry about things not working. Is, is that a big key to the adoption of this as a, a desktop situation? Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, you always have the, the perpetual, uh, you know, whenever anybody doesn't have, uh, an article to write, they'll, they'll churn out one that, you know, say, Oh, was this the year of the Linux desktop? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would agree that that yeah, inst- installation is a lot easier. Um, Susan had mentioned the install fests. Actually, at the uh, here in, in Pittsburgh, the Western Pennsylvania Linux User Group, we we kind of stopped having install fests. Uh, oh, about uh, a year or two ago, um, we used to do them uh, several times a year, and we kind of gave up because nobody was really coming because they really didn't. It was it was they they could take care of it on their own. He didn't mm-hmm. really need that. Mm-hmm. It was uh, something where, you know, maybe if you had a, an odd piece of hardware or something like that, that might take some tweaking. But, you know, most, you know, ordinary commodity stuff, uh, it pretty much just works. Um, if it's something really new, you know, some, some, some uh, you know, fancy new piece of hardware, you know, support can lag behind. But, you know, usually once it's out for a while, you know, the people get excited about it and say, oh, I want to use, you know, Linux on this. And so somebody steps up and actually writes a driver for it. For me, uh, that's a Linux, Ubuntu Linux is my test. When, uh, you know, and I, you see the computers lying around here uh, and when I've worked into the system. If I can't take a thumb drive, put Ubuntu Linux in it and it doesn't even load mm-hmm. or install, that laptop or whatever is not, I can't get any use out of it anymore. Yeah. You know, at least I can put Linux on it at least I can put Linux on it and use it for a bit, like that laptop I mentioned. The one I was putting on last night was actually one that my wife is my wife's old laptop from mm-hmm. 2011, maybe. And that's why, and that's why it's so good as a secondary market. Oh yeah, to have um, computers being reused that are really decent computers. I'm actually getting one from from my daughter from Free Geek Chicago. That's a, a reconditioned um, laptop that has, uh, I don't know what distro it will have on it, but uh, I'm very excited about it because it'll be bug free. It'll be (laughs) running fast. It'll, you know, it's a great machine and people just, you know, throw them out like pantyhose with a run on it, just ditch the computer and get a new one, you know. So um, this is a great way to um, leave your whatever junk footprint to be i want to know i don't know if it's a carbon <laughs> footprint but your junk footprint to be a lot smaller and help a lot of people too there's a lot of people that can't afford computers that that um, benefit um with like computer reach uh is a big um uh non here that takes um used computers and and uh doctors them up and then uh puts all uh linux operating systems on them and then sends them to people in need, whether they're local or whether they're across the world in uh, Africa. Yeah, and they'll actually be uh, doing what, a talk at, at Ohio Linux Fest. They're going to be uh, doing one of the presentations on Saturday. So Awesome. Uh, speaking of presentations, tell me, where are the, where are the highlights? What, what, should, uh, what, what should I be checking out if I'm coming? Okay, well, why don't I, why don't I sort of run through run through the list here. So so it's going to be Friday and Saturday. So Friday, October 2nd, Saturday, October 3rd. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the Saturday is sort of traditionally been our, our main event, um, but I mean, Friday now has kind of expanded to the point where it's, it, it's really kind of worth going as well. I mean, not that it was ever not worth, but we had a lot less content running at the time. Mm -hmm. And now, now it really is, is pretty stuffed both days. So on Friday, uh, we've got what we call our early penguins track, which are uh, just sort of nor normal tracks the, the same way that we would have at, on Saturday. So we have uh, subjects uh, like something you might be interested in, podcast, broadcasting and production. Uh, and it's it's kind of random topics. We have some, some programming stuff, uh, a, a web uh, content management system. Uh, we've got, uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, System D, that's the, the new uh, uh, boot uh, system or the, the, the underlying init system that is, is some of the very early software that runs. And it, uh, it it's caused a lot of uh, controversy, I guess, among uh, some of the people, but uh, uh, it's starting to appear in a lot of the distributions and it's it, it works differently. So I have a feeling that's going to be popular to for people to learn how to do it. Um, and, and then on Saturday, we've gonna, we're going to have uh, four different main tracks going at the same time. So, you know, we'll have one track where uh, one is going to be about web development and, and other development topics. Uh, we've got one on virtualization and containers. Uh, we've got one that's going to be on networking and uh, security. And then we've got one that's going to be uh, mostly about sort of community subjects like the computer reach that I was telling you about. Um, so I don't know, just to pick out a few things, uh, uh, I was looking through some of the slides that people had sent in, uh, the, there's one about, uh, defense in depth, uh, sort of how to set up your security, uh, processes on, on kind of a high level to say, okay, well, how do we, you know, instead of just setting up a firewall and, and then, you know, forgetting it, you know, how do you set up a layer of layers of defenses if you have, you know, if you want to protect uh, your system from uh, uh, malicious people or, or malware trying to, to break in. So those are, those are four tracks of people that have submitted applications that had the topics reviewed and accepted and assembled in these four tracks. But I wanted to mention there's actually six tracks. There's two mm -hmm. more on Saturday, where else in the world are you going to go for free if you enroll in the enthusiast uh, pass uh, for pre-registration? It's going to give you six tracks of options. Now, the other two tracks are a career track that show you all day long how to whatever advance your career. And uh, then the other one is the, um, is the open source solution stage that uh, some of our sponsors are uh, telling us about their products. So um, it's the best show in town. It's the best show ever, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of a kind. I mean, any other computer show you go to, what are the admissions, like three, $400, mm -hmm. you know? And this is, uh, this is um, free if you pre-register for the enthusiast pass. And if you're, if you're a walk-in, we're gonna be charging $10 for a walk-in fee, which is nominal. And uh, then we also have uh, professional training that's paid, and that runs from 350 to 450 uh, for the day, which is also very reasonable for professional training. Mm -hmm. So that happens alongside the early to Penguin track on Friday. Mm -hmm. So it's and you know what a lot of the the um, the talks when you go in there it'll say beginner, immediate, intermediate, so you know kind of what you're getting into when you. Um, when you sign up. So um, if you're bringing along a spouse or somebody who's only marginally interested in computers, there's um, enough interesting um, uh, talks to go to. And by the way, the, um, the keynotes tend to be a little bit more, I don't know what, inclusive of the whole um, community so that people who are not developers can, can often uh, get a lot of pleasure and enjoyment out of uh, coming to the keynotes. There's a keynote Friday evening um, 
one Saturday morning, uh, one Saturday evening. There's also a lot of social things there. There's a um, happy hour get together uh, mm -hmm. Friday. There's uh, the expo hall with lots of swag, people to talk to, uh, different cool things that you never saw before. And, um, and also the after party, you know, which is what $5 admission for the after party, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, unique to this year, um, we're going to be in the Hyatt for the after party, and hopefully their Ooh. Wi-Fi is is very cool, very fast, better than the uh, convention center is. And they're going to try to um, stream uh, Richard Stallman from the uh, free um, free what is free, it called? Software, free Foundation. software foundation. They're having a 30 year anniversary, and so they're going to try to re stream Richard Stallman from that to the um to the uh, uh party so people can um experience him a lot of people some people like him some people dislike him but we all sort of have a cheerleading section behind <laughs> free software foundation um then the other thing is i just wanted to mention john mad dog hall unfortunately is out of town this year um uh, he's a big name in the free software uh linux movement but he is going to pre-record an address for us, and we'll, so we will have um, something new from um, from uh, John Mad Dog Hall at Ohio Linux Fest this year. Well, yes. we have yes. news. I don't know if uh, yeah. maybe this is, maybe this is news to you as well. So, so he was going to Brazil. There was another event going yeah. on, but apparently there's some you know I don't know if that if that date changed or whatever. But he's going to be actually coming. Uh, yeah. Out to be there, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's not going to give a. Uh, he's not going to have his own uh, uh, talk slot, but uh, uh -huh. you know he'll be around and he'll be uh, participating. You in know some what? Of the he has so many activities. friends and so many uh, people that just love him that that he can walk into a burst of a feather session and just say John Mad Dog Hall is here, and psh, people just run into the room. So, um, <laughs> so uh, we really like him. He's been a big supporter of Ohio Linux Express from the. Uh, from probably year two on, he's yeah. been a big part of it. So awesome, awesome. So uh, tell me, so so you guys are 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 are, 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 are uh, how long have you guys been working with the with the conference? Um, hmm, let's see. I think I started maybe around two thousand four, something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I've been I've been volunteering, just kind of doing odd jobs here and there, and then uh, for for last year and then this year, uh, we. Uh, had a, a vacancy in the in the speaker chair, so that's that's what I've been doing. So I get all the proposals that come in, people that want to give a talk, and so we sift through them and and uh, try to assemble everything together into tracks. And it's basically you know it's basically a job of you know herding about three dozen cats and and getting them all <laughs> uh, getting them all lined up. Yeah, so I it's hard to tell when I started with Ohio Linux Fest because. My daughter fell in love with it the very first year. Uh, that's Beth Lynn Eicher. And the second year, she came back as a volunteer. And somehow that's morphed into her actually uh, being the whatever administrative head of the Ohio Linux Fest. If you'd like to know more about the staff, if you go to ohiolinuxfest.org, I believe it's front slash staff, uh, you can see all the key players um, uh, Warner Moore is the uh, conference chair this year. Uh, Mike Sch Schultes uh, puts out our web page and so much more registration. Um, you know, there's so many people. Um, Skippy's doing the OLF OLFI, uh, the uh, professional training. Uh, boy, there's somebody I'm sure that I'm not mentioning. That's me there. <laughs> um, yeah, Carol's doing logistics. So uh, we could actually use more volunteers if you go to those quick links in the beginning and there's a there's a link that says volunteers. Uh, we do need to have secession planning for those of us who are not getting any younger. We need to bring up some uh, new people to um, to start slow and then probably move into leadership roles. Uh, we do have sort of a new volunteer that's um, taking over the career track that has uh, shepherded that R Rafiq, is yeah. it? Yes, but how I got involved is like my daughter kept talking about this thing. She was from Pittsburgh. She came with uh, Western Pennsylvania Linux Users Group 
to Columbus uh, the first year and just fell in love with it. And uh, after a few years, uh, I started going to help out to take lunch tickets and help register people and do whatever. And it wasn't until about 2009 or 2010 that she said, you know, Mom, you work at the VA hospital and that electronic medical record system that you're using, uh, Vista, is free and open source software. And I thought, wow, I, I, every day I'm using free and open source software and didn't know it, you know. So, mm -hmm. so anyhow, that led me to present a medical track for two years um, for uh, open source medical programs. But anyhow, um, after that, I kind of morphed in. Last year, I morphed into doing the social media for Ohio Linux Fest. So I'm the person that puts out the tweets and the, and the, um, Facebook posts and uh, LinkedIn group posts and uh, the Google Plus posts and and things like that. So, so <laughs> that's that's at Ohio Linux, is that right? Uh yeah, that's uh yeah the the Twitter uh the Twitter is at Ohio Linux, and um, I think it's the Ohio Linux Fest or something like that in in um, mm -hmm. in uh, Facebook. If you uh, search it. You'll actually come across the Facebook page and the Facebook group. There's also a Facebook group on um, Facebook where people can chatter a little bit back and forth. And um, that would be really useful for people that want to share rooms or rides or, you know, want to talk about, you know, what's going on uh, with the conference uh, that can go back and forth. Because unfortunately, like all Facebook pages, um, Unless people comment, when you put a post for any page on the Facebook page, it goes into that section, comments by others, and who really reads those? It's right. hard to read those. So right. so we have a Facebook group as well. So um, we do have a pretty good following in Google+, Plus because it seems like there are a lot of um, technical people that still use Google+, Plus, and I, hopefully that won't go away too soon, but... Um, well, they just changed the logo and everything, so it must be sticking around for a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> I just got all my updates across all my i devices. So uh, and actually, even over on the on the uh, Android too. So I was waiting for all those Google. Actually, no, they haven't changed all the Google logos on my Android device, <laughs> and I have a Nexus. You know what <laughs> so. I just noticed is you know those dots on the right in Google that you click mm -hmm. on it and you can get to YouTube or whatever. They put one now for Google Plus on that. Yeah, which was always kind of a pain for me i had to log in as as susan rose and then i had to go to my profile and then somehow i got into google plus that way now i can go it's a mystery i want to use hangouts more this is another yeah. podcast but I <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i was, I was uh setting up with, uh, with a client i'm just like i forgot how much of a pain in the butt it is to use google hangouts but yeah uh, there's yeah, other you options you have to download that that software chink that it makes you download before right. it can work you know what i I'd like to put out there that if anybody uh, uploads something to YouTube or they are doing a Periscope session at mm -hmm. Ohio Linux Fest, please, please, please let me know. I mean, you can message me on Facebook, you can email me, or you can, you know, just put a social media post and I'll see it. And I would like to congeal those in one place. Um, Actually, we do have a YouTube channel for Ohio Linux Fest, and it looks like there's only two videos there, which is kind of mistaken because when you go to the list, we I have a uh, conglomeration of everybody else's uh, videos from um, Ohio Linux Fest there. So um, if you want to see what the talks were like in a different year or if you're preparing for a talk in a in a new um, in a new year, and you'd like to see what the talks were like, you can go to the YouTube channel, go to the lists, and you can see um, some keynotes. You can see uh, some other people who have um, who have um, uploaded their own uh, talks. So if you're if you have a, a company or whatever that's very proud of you for doing a talk, please, you know, um, videotape yourself and then. Um, let me know where you've uploaded it to, and uh, we can uh, uh, we can put that in our list, and then we can uh, go to social media and advertise um, how many of the videos are on the uh, YouTube list. Good, good, awesome, 
Awesome. So last bit, uh, what, what, is there a deadline on registration for everybody checking in? Um, registra- register as soon as you can. Uh, the, uh, we usually cut it off somewhere around maybe 24 hours ahead of time, something like that. The uh, probably the, the the bigger thing that you're going to have to look into is uh, is hotels. A lot of the hotels that are connected right to the convention center are uh, are, are sold out. So uh, you can go to the hotels on uh, page on on ohiolinux.org, and uh, you'll see some some description of at least how things stood as of a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I yeah I advise you to check out the hotels and then go in and register. Uh, as soon as you can, it's it's pretty quick. Uh, as, as Susan was saying, the 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 enthusiast level of registration, which is uh, get you into all of the the talks on Saturday and the early penguins talks on Friday, um, that's free uh, as long as you do it uh, ahead of time. And then uh, the next level up is the supporting level, which is essentially gets you the same thing. Uh, although it also gets you uh, a T-shirt and it gets you into the after party uh, for uh, for free, and it's it, basically it's there. You know, we you know we 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 have a lot of sponsors and and we are very appreciative of their help. But it also you know if you want to contribute a little bit to uh, to help keep things going, uh, that's always that's always helpful. That's what the supporting package is there for. And then the uh, and then the professional level is uh, the 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 Friday professional training that'll be going on. So uh, that's that's probably of, of most use to people who uh, have some use professionally for these technologies. Uh, the Docker class is is proving to be very popular. So uh, you you may want to get in on there if you want to if you want to make sure that you get a space there. Uh, we have ones on uh, OpenStack as well. Uh, that's also uh, a new container technology, and uh, we also have a uh, an LPI a Linux Professional Institute uh, certification cram class that's going to be going. Uh, the the LPI class is actually only 350. Uh, the other classes are 450 for the entire day. I yeah, I wanted to mention that we're all volunteers here, mm-hmm. and the staff are all volunteers. We're buying our own hotel rooms. We're buying our own T-shirts. Uh, I know of one at least who <laughs> and registered as a supporter just to support the uh, convention because of uh, how much they believe in it. So it it's more than a, a conference. It's, it's something you can believe in, and uh, and so I wanted to I wanted to say kudos to everybody who's believed in us and helped us over the years. Excellent. It's been great to see uh, what you guys have been doing. Uh, thank you for, for bringing the Ohio Linux Fest to our attention. Hey, it's not that far away if you're in Pittsburgh, as many of you are, I know, that listen to this show. Uh, it's, a, what, a three-hour drive away to Columbus? That's not bad, right? Yeah. Three, three and a half. Three, three and a half hours. That's that's that's, that's fine. That That's yeah. that's reachable, man. That's that's not... that's that's. Only slightly farther than Cleveland, uh, so uh, no, it's worth it. And uh, uh, Columbus is a town that's coming up, as I believe we talked about last last uh, last year on, uh, about this. And I hear so many great things coming out of there. And um, you know, I, I, you know, we talk about all the stuff coming up around Pittsburgh, but Columbus is really another one of those towns that's coming up too. And it's really good to, good to see that um, uh, happening. So, thank you so much, Susan and Vance. Uh, where are you guys personally on social media? If people want to hit you up on Twitter or anything, are we on Twitter? Oh yeah, Twitter is <laughs> at Ohio Linux Fest. Um, I have several Twitters of my own, but um, at no, no, it's not o- at Ohio Linux Fest. Summit. It's at Ohio Linux. By the way, yes. our hashtag is hashtag pound Ohio Linux. You don't have to put Ohio Linux Fest, Ohio Linux Fest 2015, none of that. Short and sweet, just pound. Ohio Linux. That's so right. if you check that out, you can see um, a lot of different companies and people that are uh, posting that they're going. It's all you guys. Excellent. And Vance, are you on the uh, social medias? You want people to reach out to you on? Uh, actually, I'm I'm mostly antisocial, so I don't oh. do I don't do all the uh, Twitter and Facebook. He's I do have a LinkedIn account, but when yeah. I 
as often as I check it. But uh... well, I'll make sure to link that from this uh, description. Then <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you some new friends over there. Thank you so much. Check them out, OhioLinux.org, and check out all the other discussions over at AwesomeCast.net. Follow us on social media, AwesomeCast on the Twitter's, Facebooks, and Google Plus, and uh, and AwesomeCast on the YouTube's. If you like the video forms of these, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <clears throat> thank you to our awesome guests. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.